Hello, this is my generic intro for four videos this week. So if you've seen it once, go ahead and skip to the first deck tech. I got early access to Modern Horizons 3 cards through the MTGO content creator program. Shout out to Torben and everyone at Daybreak Games for making this happen. So I have recorded an absolute ton of matches with Modern Horizons 3 stuff. What I chose to do was do a deck tech and then do one or maybe two rounds with a deck and then switch decks. So this week is going to be like deck tech game, deck tech game, deck tech game, going back and forth. I have tried to organize these in a way where I am releasing these as a batch of four videos in a way that makes sense. Um, I have occasionally posted these out of the order in which they were originally recorded. So if I refer to something weird that you haven't seen yet, no, I didn't. Um, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, my brain was absolute mush as I sat down and recorded Modern Horizons 3 matches for six hours straight, um, especially in one of the final rounds. I made some errors that were pretty big, but I hope you'll forgive me. And folks, I hope you enjoy. There's some crazy content coming this week. You are not going to want to miss any of it. And just so I don't have to disrupt the flow of this video, which is going to be absolutely hype, let me just say from the beginning, today's video is sponsored by two organizations. The first is toamagic.com. Tales of Adventure is an awesome store, and Modern Horizons 3 is going to massively shake up the legacy metagame. You are going to need cards, and if you want to get it from one retailer, instead of having 10,000 envelopes filtering into your house or your apartment over the next two weeks, consider checking them out. You will get free shipping on your order. And today's video is also sponsored by Moxfield.com. You know, that wonderful little thing that I'm using for all of my deck techs? All of my Modern Horizons 3 lists are available on my Moxfield account. And if you want to check out any of my deck lists, that is the place to go. And if you need to host any deck lists of your own, check them out. Let's take a look at a possible post-ban Death and Taxes deck list. Um, and one thing that I want to state here is that I am a very big believer that when you want to test new cards, you play too many of that new card to evaluate how good it is, and then you dial back to a more reasonable level later. So I have built this as very, very, very light Black Splash Death and Taxes. Uh, Thoughtseize is something that is probably necessary in the 75 right now, but I want to max out on new cards for the purposes of testing them for this video, so I am going to set Thoughtseize to the side. All right, now that I've done that justice, let's talk about the build. White Orchid Phantom is a very interesting card. It has good stats to start with. It is a flying creature with first strike, and a 2-2 body means it does not die to Bowmasters. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-basic land. Its controller may search their library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield tab, and then shuffle. So against some legacy decks, this is just a two mana stone rain on a creature. I mean, we like sinkhole on this channel. It is a fun card, but this is sinkhole on a flying first striking 2-2 body that can then be blinked to do it again. That's pretty fucking cool. And we are going to play it with another very good blink creature. Elia Exuberant Shepherd. This is a 2-2 flash creature. Again, doesn't die to Bowmasters. Big deal. When it attacks, exile up to one other target non-land permanent. At the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it entered under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Felia. So this is a way for us to recycle our White Orchid Phantom and repeatedly blow up our opponent's lands, other than the usual like Flicker Wisp Yorian nonsense that we're very much used to from these sorts of decks. One thing that I want to evaluate is whether or not Playing Flagstones is cute or good. So Flagstones is something that people historically have played with Cataclysm as a way to kind of keep a land after they cast Cataclysm and blow up most of the lands. We can use White Orchid Phantom targeting our own Flagstones to destroy our Flagstones and fish a land out of our library and then fish a second land out of our library from the Flagstones trigger. And that's pretty cool. So if our opponent just has a bunch of basic lands, we can target our own lands for some value still, uh, which is pretty neat. I have adjusted the mana base to be a little bit more conservative. 
since we are slotting in these flagstones, and since White Orchid Phantom is a spirit knight and that does not have the most overlap with other creature types, and Felia is just straight up a dog, uh, I don't know that Cavern of Souls makes a lot of sense here. Uh, I'm pretty hot on Sanctifier in Vec conceptually as a sideboard card in the post Modern Horizons 3 world. I think there's going to be a lot more black running around in the short term. And I already like this card in our Grief and Bowmaster filled world. Three might be too many, but I think I want to start here. See how it does. Okay, I have kind of an unexciting hand here. It's turn two Thalia backed by a Wasteland. Um, I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. I like this hand a lot more. I will pitch the secondary Aether Vial here. Let's see what Brian's playing. It is a noble hierarch. We'll start trying to figure out what that means in terms of this deck. I hate drawing the secondary Thalia here. That is very much not what I want to see. It does mean that I can cast one next turn and then vial another in. So Brian has something that he wants to ramp to. Could be Uro, could be Teferi, could be some new card. I'm going to assume it is some new card. Windswept Heath and Prismatic Ending on Aether Vial. Sure. Thalia, fucking stop it. We don't want that here. That's, that's too much of that lady. And then I imagine we will see a Surveil Land here. We do. And a Ponder has gone to the bin. Uh, it's very mana inefficient with a Thalia in play. Aha! It is the bird, Nadu Winged Wisdom. So, whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of the library. If it's a land, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. It only triggers once each turn. Or sorry, only triggers twice each turn. And this ability does go to every creature. Meaning that if I Bowmaster that Noble Hierarch, it is going to immediately replace itself, which is a little bit frustrating. It's put it into your hand and not draw. That's some shit. Uh, thanks, I hate it. I think I'm going to try to just resolve this now. So what I imagine is going to happen is that my ass is going to get shukoed. And I am going to non-deterministically die. Are there more surveil lands? There are. Lion Sash goes to the yard. So there's a Stoneforge Mystic package to tutor up the shuko. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That is getting rid of my Thalia. I have another one that I can play. Does this thing fly? This thing flies. I can't even block it. Thanks, I hate it. All right, I get my own Surveil Land. No. That can absolutely go to Graveyard. I will drop a pre-combat Thalia to make nonsense less likely to happen, and I think I'm going to push damage. Uh, it is possible that some flash creature could come in and take out my Bowmasters, and I would be sort of sad about it, but I don't know if I am winning a long game here, so we are going aggro. Mystic Sanctuary can get back a Prismatic Ending yet again. Uh, it is getting a Ponder, though, and I do have Bowmasters. I hope my opponent does not have a Counterspell. It seems like this is a Recruiter of the Guard turn. It's hitting play. I'm thinking about Solitude, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to pitch my excess Thotlia here. It will trigger the bird, assuming that it does hit play. It is a Force of Will, so Brian did not go for the Recruiter of the Guard. He wanted to attempt to take another card out of my hand if I was going to go for a Solitude, which is what happened. So heads up play there. And we've got a Swords to Plowshares on my Bowmaster, uh, which makes sense. Like, if the Ponder went to the top, it makes sense that that would be the case. I can Flicker Wisp Recruiter of the Guard on my next turn to get something that answers the Nadu. But, like, my opponent could drop a Shuko this turn and life could get real bad. Okay, it is just another Ponder. Good. Amio Inquisitive Student. Sure. I'm going to take four in the air. It is not the best. Uh, it's a Recruiter of the Guard. So if I am willing to lose this Flicker Wisp, I can just Solitude this creature immediately. I'm probably willing to do that, or alternatively, I could 
Flicker Wisp. Sure. The opponent is playing around Bowmaster Ping here by not blocking the slightly bigger Thalia. Yeah, I think I'm going to Flicker Wisp Recruiter get Solitude, Solitude this out of play and leave myself with the Flying Body. Target Recruiter, End Step, comes back, get Solitude, cast Solitude, Junk Recruiter. Uh, we're going to get rid of the Nadu immediately. My opponent does get to do its ability, gets a Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, okay, I'm very glad that we cleared that, otherwise that was just Stoneforge for Shuko for an absolutely disgusting amount of value. Cryptic Coat was pitched to a Force of Will effect earlier this game. There is a Shuko. Another Hierarch. Shuko in play. Shuko on Tamio. And no attack. Sure. So I can attack and offer Flicker Wisp for Tamio. I don't know that I want to do that. I'm just going to put Yorian in my hand and plan on having a disgusting turn next turn. Assuming no disruption. All right, Tamio does not attack. This last card could be Force of Will. I will put my opponent to the test. Show it to me. Six mana. Uh, it is the six mana Force of Will, unfortunately. So I think I will just go ahead and pass the turn here. I don't super like the attacks right now. I can make my attacks better with Mother of Runes. I am unsure who is favored at this point. So the second Noble Hierarch means that this can have five toughness on the attack. Maybe I should have attacked. I forgot about the second Hierarch. All right. I still potentially want my Flicker Wisp around, though. Blue gets cracked. There's another Shuko. Now the Shukos can be moved around to just kind of discourage easy attacks here. Or it's to Plowshares, sure. So I like the way the first strike stuff kind of lines up here. Am I okay with the Thalia attack still? My opponent could put all of the creatures in front of it, in which case I could kill two Hierarchs. Um, yeah, I'm still okay with that. So let's send it, send it. So do I want to kill a Stoneforge or a Noble Hierarch, and do I want to use Swords to Plowshares? Kill the Hierarch. Yeah. I think I'm just okay with that trade. I think I want a Swords to Plowshares this. I think I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this is really awkward if they draw Nadu. Not going to Swords immediately. Oh, maybe I do, right? Because, like, he would take his attack step prior to doing anything else. So I would, like, end up using the Swords anyway, and that would let him untap with more mana. Uh, let's just take out the thing that produces mana. Uh, land, perfectly happy seeing that. And we're holding back now. Uh, Bowmasters is perfectly fine. I think I'm just going to attack in for one and hold up Bowmasters. Or, sorry, attack in for three and hold up Bowmasters. Seven. I'll respond. Yaw. So am I just going face? Just put two six, put two five. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go to face. Yeah, I'm going to put them to five. All right, it is a Nadu. So now Shuko can start doing this thing, where my opponent generates a large amount of value in a way that is not technically drawing cards for the purposes of Orcish Bowmasters. And this is going to allow my opponent to make a large number of land drops. Uh, I'm going to need to auto yield to a lot of things here. So this is not necessarily a deterministic win or anything, uh, but it will generate a very large amount of value for my opponent. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, auto yield to that too. So this triggers twice for each one of the creatures. And then Brian can, like, fetch and start to play stuff from hand from there. I'll pop out the revealed zone here, as it does seem like that is going to be quite relevant. So there's an actual land drop from hand, dropping a Hierarch, and now the Shuko can be moved over there to repeat this process. I do have a Mother of Runes defending my Orcish Bowmasters from something like Swords to Plowshares. What is this Stoneforge getting? Aldra, sure. And this can re-trigger Field of the Dead. Oh, wow. Okay. That one was not on my bingo card. Everything else that I've seen so far has kind of made sense. I guess let's always yield to that. 
Oh, oh, I see. So now the Field of the Dead zombies can do Shuko nonsense. Oh no, that's real cute. That is, that is a very good addition. So I imagine this process is going to uh, repeat quite a bit at this point. So now I'm going to jump to giving you uh, notable updates. Okay, something is about to happen. It is fetching, which re-triggers Field of the Dead, which means that the Shukos can activate more times. Prismatic ending targeting Mother of Runes. So I will attempt to save Mother of Runes. Brian can now use multiple copies of Swords of Plowshares to take out Bowmasters and Flicker Wisp, or Bowmasters and Mom, uh, which we are going to see. So at this point, I can go ahead and F6. Uh, there is a Stoneforge Mystic attack with a 5-4. And I am facing down a lot of power. I have three in the air that is invalidated by this. I think I'm going to take a chump block of some kind. Okay, and it seems like Brian is now passing the turn and is going to discard a handful of cards. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp does not quite get me there. I can get through for three points of damage if I blink this out of play. I don't have the last point of damage, and I am going to die to just going wide. I can have four bodies. If I blink one of these, this one, two, three, four, five. Uh, well, or no, because the Shukos can be moved to the things in the air. So I always take at least five, meaning that I am at six. Brian can maybe just fetch. I could blink my Bowmaster, Bowmaster ping Brian to three and try to stay alive for one turn. Ah, right, yes. That, I imagine, means that I am going to die on Brian's combat step. So no fetching there for extra Field of the Dead zombies. There's a Caracas. Nadu is now protected for the rest of the game. Uh, doesn't look like I've seen a basic land, by the way, so my spirits are probably quite good here. Alright, so I block a critter. I block a critter. I'm currently taking, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I make this block, I take 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I am dead. Uh, that was kind of a crazy game. So... I need to look at the wording of Nadu. So the cards could go into hand. Deafening Silence could, I guess, technically do some things. Battle of Bywater could do some things. Lauren is a good tutor target. I'm definitely playing that. At the Exile is absolutely good. I'll be playing that. And like, not super excited about Deafening Silence. I like Bowmasters. I like Phantom. I like Thalia. I like Stoneforge still. I like my cards. Extraction Specialist is a bit niche. I think I still like Vile. Liquor Wisp does not necessarily have the best targets. And then I will trim one Felia. Trim one Felia. My opponent does have Caracas after all. Uh, this hand is quite awkward. If I get to Wasteland my opponent in the first turn cycle, I think this is fine. If I don't, it's pretty sketch. Um... I don't know that I win the game keeping that hand. Uh, this is a stronger hand. I'm going to throw back the Bowmaster since I do not have black mana. I am certainly not drawing my new cards that I want to showcase, such as the woes of playing with an 80-card Yorian decklist. Let's see what Brian is starting off with. Non-basic land Noble Hierarch, and I get to disrupt both, would be kind of cool. Negative. So I don't think I am wastelanding here. I need this mana since I did not draw another land. We'll say yes, and this is just going to be Cauldra. I would very much like Cauldra to solo this game backed by Wasteland and Swords to Plowshares for relevant creatures. But a Swords to Plowshares here is incredibly good. Yep, yep, yep. That's rough. Uh, I have no valid play. I'm not going to Wasteland when I am already missing land drops. Yikes. Brian could Wasteland my Wasteland here to keep me off of additional mana sources. Uh, it is not the best two for one, like, but if Brian gets ahead on board and I am unable to play any cards, like, this is perfectly fine. Oh god. Okay. 
Um, I think I will probably just concede here. I don't think this is going to be good gameplay from here, and I would rather get more matches in with new cards. Okay, I am on the draw. I have a one lander that's pretty good if I draw another land or if Vile does not get countered. Otherwise, this hand is sort of awkward. Blackstones plus Phantom is a way to ramp. Uh, I would rather just have lands. I'm going to try to keep this. I haven't kept a hand that looks like this in a long time, so let's try it out. I kind of just think Aether Vial isn't really a good magic card anymore. Delver. I have removal for that. Source of Plashers is a great draw. Let's attempt to rate up Solitude this creature and then resolve my Aether Vial. Yeah. All right, cool. Vial is in play. This start now feels pretty strong. I don't draw the next land. It's not the end of the world. There's another Delver. That's fine. I've got swords for that. Drawing a land so I can play around days would be cool. Um, yeah, let's get this going. I would like to play my removal spell around days. The second vial doesn't matter that much. Now, this is a flying first strike creature. My opponent has Force of Will. Oh, that's fine. I'll take some damage. End of turn, we'll activate this. We'll see if a Mother of Runes will live. It does. Hell yeah. Yes. Up you go. Uh, we have Felia as well to blink White Orchid Phantom. Uh, that is quite strong. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. Uh, we have Delver covered in the combat step. I do not need to use a removal spell on Delver. I would now like to potentially save this Swords to Plowshares for like a Murktide Regent or maybe a Psychic Frog. Come at me, bro. Bro came at me. Yes. White Orchid Phantom. I would like to destroy one of your lands. You may float your mana. Oh, no. No basics. Flying first strike. Let's go. A little thing here, I also think I probably should have destroyed Undercity Sewers so that it can't be bounced for surveil purposes later. For sure, sure. All right, there is a Murktide Regent. This is very likely backed by Force of Will. That is a small Murktide Regent. I'm okay with swordsing it. If it doesn't work, no big deal. Cool. Uh, we are going to keep this vial on two. Fantastic. So, at the end of my opponent's turn, I'm going to put in Felia, and then I am going to have a repeatable sinkhole, uh, which sounds really fun to me. So, yeah. Yes, Felia. And now this dog is going to blink this and repeatedly sinkhole. I can also, at some point, choose to target my own flagstones. Um, in the short term... When does my thing come back? Uh, okay, my opponent's just done. Yeah, okay. Sweet. That's, that's what I wanted to do. I would like Path to Exile quite a bit. I'm going to assume that Sanctifier in Vec is perfectly fine. And I'm going to assume that Battle of Bywater is good. Um, I could mess around with Anti-Graveyard stuff. I haven't seen it yet. It's potentially there. I don't really know how to board. All my cards seem, like, perfectly fine. I could go down on Thalia. Thalia is vulnerable to Bowmasters. Oh, I could see that being reasonable. I could see Extraction Specialist being fine but unnecessary. And I can potentially just trim one Felia. Seems good. Awkward keep worked out, by the way. Uh, this, seems, this seems fine. Like, it has removal spell. I know my opponent does not have basics. So, like, Path and White Orchid Phantom are very, very good together. All right, it is a Delver yet again. Let's just start off this game with a basic land. Yeah, basic planes, and I am fine just removing the Delver immediately. If I eat an, a daze, I eat a daze. I have White Orchid Phantom coming, so like, it's all good. Just a cantrip. Shocking, and playing a new Delver. I've got that handled. 
I think I am fine continuing to fish basics out of my deck. Uh, show me your days or equivalent. Nope. Uh, take out Underground Sea. You would like to find a basic land? No. But I, I offered. I offered twice, Brian. Why didn't you find a basic land, Brian? Brian still does have more mana, is not able to attack this turn. Um, I have this game, uh, like, not on lockdown or anything, but this is quite powerful. So let's blow up an underground sea. See if anything happens with that mana. That is a dress down. Sure. I think I just say sure to that. That takes away these abilities temporarily. I'm just going to hold back. I don't want to use this Swords to Plowshares on the Delver if I don't have to. There are presumably better creatures coming later. So there is a Fatal Push. So now I will Swords to Plowshares the Delver. And if my opponent would like to Force of Will this, I am fine with that happening. Otherwise, we can just clear the board. I don't think I'm going to cast Recruiter of the Guard into Days. I don't know, maybe I just do. Maybe I just do. We're on the no respect team. Yes, I've got a solitude already as removal. I could pick up Felia. Felia's a little slow. I think I'm just going to pick up another land destruction spell. Like, the ability to tutor for land destruction is sort of stupid. I've got solitude covering a Merktide Regent, potentially. Exsanguinator Cavalry. Yeah, you got it. Not worried about dying to that. Ooh. Yeah. I think I'm very interested in that. There's potentially a Force of Will. If Force of Will happens, I lose Lion Sash, but then I resolve the Phantom and just blow up another land. All right, Force of Will, Pitching, Ponder. I lose Lion Sash. So now, we'll just bam. I'll continue to fetch basics, because basic lands are good. I will resolve the Phantom. The Phantom will blow up an Underground Sea. And I'll pass the turn. On my next turn, I can just Solitude, Exsanguinator, Cavalry, and start getting in there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so there's another land. Brian is holding back. This is a land one way or another. A little awkward with Wasteland there. I think I am just going to cast this. Yeah, and that's, that's enough. Absolutely savage. I'll do a longer deck tech when I actually record with this list, but I have also put together a green-white land destruction deck list. Um, that focuses around White Orchid Phantom's ability to destroy lands, and then the abilities of six, which when it attacks you mill three cards, you can put a land card from among them into your hand, uh, and Deep Root Wayfinder, which when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to surveil one, you can return a land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So the idea here is that you can recur or find your wastelands, and with Six's ability, as long as it's your turn, non-land permanent cards in your graveyard have retrace. So these nice, like, smaller creatures that, like, can just, like, die or whatever, or your opponent uh, otherwise removes them because they have an impact on the game, you just, like, discard a land later on and you get to rebuy these creatures. And we've seen these sorts of effects from Rewar Formal where Sarah, Paragon, um... Sphine's Reclamation, if you go back further, and they tend to be okay. I, I think it is going to be good flexibility. And to get saucy with this deck list and to make sure that we have time to kind of set up our thing, I'm going to try a main deck set of Vexing Bobble here as a way to stop counter spells and sort of bridge us to the mid game that we want to be in. I'll go into some more details with the deck building later, but I think that is going to be enough to kind of get us started for today. Uh, like one of the other deck lists that I'm going to be showcasing in these videos, we are also going to be playing flagstones so that we can blow our own blow up our own flagstones if we do need to ramp. All right, we are playing against Bryant again. Uh, I don't really like this opening hand, assuming that we are playing against combo. I'll just keep this and put back some land. So Bryant needs a counter spell here, or needs to go off in response to me playing Bobble. Uh, hold on. That was weird. It was a dark color for a second. Okay, good. All right, we are playing a game of magic. Force of Will, confirmed good card. 
So my long-term plan is six to get that bobble back. Oh my god, I just drew another one off the top. Um, insane. Absolutely insane. So now I'm going to go ahead and play Wasteland, help cover the polluted delta aspects. All right. I don't know if this is going to soft lock my opponent just fully out of the game here, but there is a very good chance that that is the case. So now I can discard a land to put another bobble into play, uh, should I have the need to do so. All right, we've got some action. More fetching. More fetching. There is a necro dominance in play now. Or just two cards. Uh, this is straight up just a value necro dominance. We will go ahead and attack in with six. We mill three cards. I'll take a basic planes. That's fine. Hit for 12. I'll wasteland my opponent. I can play Stoneforge Mystic. I think I'm just going to put another bobble into play uh, just in case. We'll discard that planes that we already showed Bryant. Oh, fuck. I can just do this multiple fucking times. So I can make my land drop then. Play Stoneforge Mystic from the graveyard by discarding a fetch land. Holy shit, six is better than I thought. I didn't really think about just playing multiple things. I'll pick up Lion Sash, um, help cover the graveyard. Uh, this is obnoxious. So here's the Necro trigger. Uh, going down to two, there is a Ley Line of Anticipation here. Note that a large amount of ritual mana can still kill me. Bobble very much counters. I assume we might see something like a mini tendrils to survive if I am not just outright dead. Storm count's not very high right now. I think if I eat a tendrils from graveyard, Bryant can't win based on the deck list that I saw previously. All right, there's Cabal Ritual, no threshold. Force of Will builds Storm. Bryant is cooking. Like, we're going to counter the Force of Will. This is hilarious. Pact of Negation in response. Build a storm. I'm going to be so happy for Bryant if Bryant wins here. I'm going to just always yield to these vexing bobble triggers. So this is 4 mana. I am still at 20. That's a ponder. Lotus Petal. Storm is 9. Is there a Tendrils? There is a Beseech the Mirror, which puts the card to hand. Bryant will cast Tendrils, however the Storm trigger does still go off. And all of these various copies of Tendrils of Agony are going to go at me. Resulting in a win for Bryant. That was hot. Alright, uh, so I have Deafening Silence, Surgical Extraction, Stony Silence, Sanctifier in Vec. I could play Lauren. I do not want Swords to Plowshares. Deep Root Wayfinder seems slow. Can cut at least Batter Skull here. Lion Sash is like okay. Mom's okay. I'm thinking about trimming Stoneforge. I'm thinking about trimming Mom or Noble Hierarch. Mom basically defends Thalia. I guess it technically defends Sanctifier Invec. I don't know that I'm like super, super excited about any of that. Uh, let's try this. Uh, yeah, no, this hand is great. I'm going to go ahead and just rip a Savannah out of my deck here. Yeah. Start on a Bobble, see if Bryant has a Force of Will, negative on Force of Will. Now, unfortunately, if I do play Stony Silence, I won't be able to sacrifice my Vexing Bobble to draw a card. Oh no. It's just Brainstorm and Pass. Which is great for me. Um... Let's go yaw and yaw. So the reason that we're doing this is so that if one of these is bounced out of play, the other is still covering. Ritual-based lines are still live, but the artifact stuff and the beseech stuff has gotten significantly worse. Oh no, he's going. It could just be Necro, uh, you know, in air quotes. I don't have a creature in play pressuring his life total yet, so he can go pretty deep if he would like. Nope, just, just one. So, I am going to go ahead and play six this turn. 
continue to rip savannas out of the deck. And then next turn I can play two noble hierarchs, attack in for four, and go from there. How much life? Oh, okay. Uh, it is now. Here we go. Two dark rituals. There is born upon the wind. Things have flash. A ball ritual. No threshold. Hmm. I guess there's some tension between the beseech graveyard recursion plan and the necro dominance. Yeah, so the whole like Gaia's will thing is not happening once necro dominance is in play. That's a good thing to be actively thinking about. Uh, we are into lethal storm range already. There is no artifact in play to sack for Beseech, though. There is a brainstorm. And there is the tendrils with a storm count of 12. Uh, that will do. I am very dead. And Bryant beats the vexing bobble deck. Uh, GG's. All right, I wasn't really planning on recording with this one, but I've got a little bit of time. So let's talk about the new Oops All spells. The core of this deck has not changed. It is still a combo deck that is seeking to entirely mill its deck with either Balustrade Spy or Undercity Informer, and then winning the game by casting a Dread Return on a Thassa's Oracle. The core of this deck has changed in no capacity. What has changed about the deck is its mana base, as Modern Horizons 3 gives us both Fell the Profane and Bogort Trawler as additional lands. So this deck is not playing any traditional lands so that Undercity, Informer, and Balustrade Spy mill the entire deck with 100% accuracy. But what that means is that the mana is not actually that good, and you don't actually have that many initial mana sources. Bell the Profane and Boggart Trawler make it so that you have a higher density of initial black mana, which matters a lot for casting your Dark Rituals, Cabal Rituals, and your namesake cards. In addition, these are not embarrassing Magic the Gathering cards. The fact that this just is an extra black card that can imprint under Chrome Mox is great, that it's an additional blend on the back is great, that it is a backdoor answer to a hate bear that is preventing you from winning the game, you guessed it, is great. And guess what? Graveyards are kind of a big deal in Legacy right now. Uh, you're playing against a dirtily control deck. They kind of stopped your first attempt. They've got an Uro coming. Oh wait, no they don't. You just trawl their lands out of their grave. Or sorry, you trawl their entire graveyard out of their graveyard and now they have to dig through and find a new win condition, and hopefully that gives you the time to go off again. So why don't we go ahead and see how this deck actually performs? Let's goldfish it a bit. All right, I goldfished Oops. Let's actually play a game with it now. Uh, this has no payoff card. This is a mulligan. This has no payoff card. This is a mulligan. Uh, three life, Agadim's Awakening, Dark Ritual... Lotus Petal Spy, that is a four card kill. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's try to kill this bird deck, shall we? Yeah, pay three life. Dark Ritual. Gov. Oh shit. Target me. All right, we are going to get a bunch of Narc Amoebas into play. And Brian knows what's happening and concedes. So we got the game one. That's fantastic. So, I'm probably going to board in a couple of Goblin Charbelchers just as an alternative win condition here. So, what goes away? I imagine some of the Singleton cards are relatively cuttable. Probably not the Cabal Therapy. Um, I don't know for the last card. Or wait, it's just two. Yeah, those will do. So, this shoves on turn one and has a bunch of stable mana to try again later. Yeah, sure. Plus, if I lose, I just have another game where I'm on the play. Sure. I'd love to just draw like a Pact of Negation here. All right. Play. Hey, life. Dark Ritual. Spy. Uh, we'll use the Red Spirit Guide. Spy is in play. I will mill myself, please. We are eating Surgical Extraction on the Oracle. That will do. I don't have Memories Journey. I boarded that one out. 
Would not have mattered unless I drew that green spirit guide specifically. I'll concede. Am I supposed to keep the memory's journey to play around that now that I know my opponent has it? Maybe. Get rid of a cabal ritual. IDK. Okay, so this is turn two with no protection. The oracle is in my hand, which is not a problem, but is slightly awkward. The memory's journey is also something that I would prefer to be in the graveyard. I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. No. Let's go to five on this one. So, untapped land, lotus petal, lotus petal. The, the hand's a keep. It's just a question of, like, what do I keep? I think that's expensive, so it goes back. I think I am going to keep two Undercity Informers. I think I am going to jam and pass with the attempt of doing a turn two. This opens this creature up to Swords to Plowshares, but I already kind of think that Force of Will is very likely. Sure. All right, we're just going to reaccumulate mana and try again. With protection would be preferable. And there's a Shuko. Um, three mana Prismatic Ending is a thing. Source of Plowshares is a thing. Is it getting better for me to wait? It might not be getting better for me to wait. Uh, I'm going to shove. Pass turn. Hope it's still alive. I think there's just too many things that are good against me at this point of the game where I'm hoping to get lucky. Like, even Wasteland taking me off of this is still quite good. I mean, I'm going to try. All right, Brian, show me that you have another piece of interaction. Containment Priest. Yeah, that'll do. Unseed. GG's. Bird deck too strong. All right, I've kept my opening hand. I Chrome Mox. I put some card under Chrome Mox. I cast Dark Ritual. I play a land. It enters play untapped. Uh, I can play a Cabal Ritual if I need to play around days, which I know I don't here. I play a Balustrade Spy. I mill my entire library, getting four Narcomoebas into play. Did I mention the fact that I have Pact of Negation to back this up? Uh, anyway, we cast Red Return, targeting Thassa's Oracle, sacrificing three of our Narcomoebas, and guess what? We won the game in like 30 seconds with protection. Wow. Now, it's not always going to be that simple. Uh, this opening hand, for example, is just basically entirely mana, so this one is not going to do it. Uh, this second hand is another turn one win. Uh, we'll keep this one. We'll put back Seagate Restoration. Uh, even if we ignore the bonus mana that we just drew there, we just go ya, yeah, ya, yeah, pay the three life, dark ritual, spy, buy mills all of our stuff. We do the whole Narc Amoeba loop yet again. Uh, let's just look at one more opening hand just for the sake of comparison. All right, so once more, let's do this. Uh, opening hand doesn't look great and has multiple Narc Amoebas in it. Uh, second hand, land, chrome mox imprint, chrome mox imprint is three of the four mana that we already need to win. So assuming we draw like another mana source, we just win. Uh, let's keep this. Yeah, let's keep this. We'll throw back one land. Okay, so play this land. Yes, play this lotus petal. Play this chrome mox. Do this. Play this Chrome Mox. Do this. Spy. And we are just going to win on turn one yet again, right? We are going to put all of our Narc Amoebas into play. And then Dread Return, Athasa's Oracle. You know, we have more than enough creatures here. We could also Cabal Therapy first if we need to. Um... This deck picked up a scary degree of extra consistency with these lands. Um, expect people to be messing around with this card. Due to time constraints and trying to push out this content very quickly, I'm not going to record a conclusion today that has kind of all of my general thoughts. Instead, I'm going to say, come back tomorrow for more content that features all of these sweet Modern Horizons 3 cards. And if you liked any of the particular decks that you saw, I am probably going to do a full league with them as soon as the cards are available to the general public. So consider subscribing. There's going to be a lot more. And should you find that you need Modern Horizons cards, and you probably will, 
toamagic.com is the place to go. Use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your order. And folks, I am so excited to be trying out these Modern Horizons cards in early access so that I can get this content out to you all ASAP. Uh, I'm very happy with the Magic Online Creator program so far. And uh, here's to looking forward to how Modern Horizons 3 cracks open the legacy metagame. Have a great rest of the day. See you.